The Christmas season is my favorite time to DIY with my Cricut machine. So today I'm partnering with Cricut to give you 10 different projects full of inspiration that anyone can do with vinyl decals just in time for the holidays. So stay tuned. This is Whiskey and Wet. My name's Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share DIY and budget home decor, Cricut projects, tips and tricks, wood builds, really all things DIY. So if that interests you, be sure to hit subscribe down below so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wet video. I've heard from so many of you that you are so excited to do Christmas crafts, but your Cricut intimidates you, so don't worry, we're gonna take that fear out of it today. These are beginner-friendly projects. I'm sharing some of the tips and tricks I wished I knew when I started, and I've got 10 different projects to get your wheels turning for Christmas. Let's get into it. So we're gonna start by personalizing these simple tags that you could customize for any style of Christmas decor. And we're gonna take the lessons learned here and apply them to the other projects throughout the video. So these start with some tags from Amazon. And my first step for making vinyl decals is to first prep and measure. So if you need to paint, do that. And then you also need to know how big your decal is gonna be. So these are three inch tags, but I don't wanna cover the whole thing. I want about two and a half inches, which is what I'm showing here. Once you have your size, you're either going to design something in design space or you're going to import it from outside. So we're going to start by designing our own. So I just clicked add text to the left and I typed my name and then I'm going to look for a font that I like. You can use the fonts on your system, so on your computer or your phone, or you can import some as well. Now I'm using this Bikini Babe font because I liked how it looked with the script. And then I am gonna duplicate that either by doing control copy, control paste, or you can click duplicate on the right hand side to get four because I'm gonna do Alex, Whitney, Finn, and Sebastian. I'm double clicking my text to change them to each of the person's names. And then I'm gonna keep that two and a half inch width in mind because that is how I'm gonna size my items. Because Whitney and Sebastian are the two longest names, I'm gonna make those two and a half inches long. And then I'm gonna use that to help me size Alex and Finn's name. Because if I did the two inches or two and a half inches across, they might be too big. And I don't want it to be like Alex and Finn way overpowering our other two names. So I'm gonna stack them here. This just helps me visualize. I'm just dragging and dropping. And I'm using the arrows in the right hand corner just to drag to make them bigger or smaller till I get them to the size that I want. Then when you're all set, you're gonna click make it up in the right hand corner. And that is basically like hitting print on your printer. And sticking with the printer analogy, you're gonna check to make sure you have the right material selected and then you're gonna cut. So here I'm using permanent vinyl. I'm using permanent vinyl for everything across this video. When I put decals on decor, I like to use permanent vinyl. So now we're gonna get our vinyl ready to cut. Now this looks like a wonky scrap, but that's exactly what it is, is a piece of scrap. I know that I'm only gonna need a little bit to cut. If you're unsure, you can go ahead and cut a piece long enough and then trim it out. Another thing to keep in mind is when you apply your vinyl to your mat, you're gonna wanna make sure that it is aligned with the top left corner because that is basically where everything starts. It's like your printer, your text is gonna start left to right, it's gonna start cutting from left to right on the mat. Then we're gonna load it up. This is similar for any machine that you have. You're gonna load it up and then select the blinking arrows. And really Cricut's good at walking you through the prompt. So here it's loaded and ready to go. So you're gonna hit the blinking button. If you don't have a Cricut Maker 3 or an Explore 3, it'll look like a little Cricut logo, but it will blink the same way. Then after that, like your printer, you're just gonna let it do its thing. So it's basically quote unquote, printing or cutting in this case, what you told it to do. Then when it's done, it will blink like this. You're gonna hit your eject and it will kick it right out. Easy peasy. So now we're gonna weed off the vinyl that we don't want. So you're gonna flip your mat over, grab your vinyl, and then peel your mat away from your vinyl. If you peel the vinyl up without flipping it over, it's gonna curl up and be all weird. And it's gonna be a lot harder to work with. So then number four is weed your design. So here I'm just trimming off any extra vinyl. You can throw that other piece to the side as scrap to use later. And then I like to start in the top right hand corner. Use your weeding tool, which looks like a Captain Hook hook. Grab the edge and start pulling it back. I use my little hook to pull up anything that might happen to be caught. And then I also wanna make sure that any of the dots like the tops of eyes or different little pieces like periods or things like that aren't getting left behind. So the I and Sebastian did, I just grabbed it and stuck it back down. And then it's time to tape and transfer. So here I'm using Cricut transfer tape. It comes in a long roll. I just cut a piece with my scissors to fit what I'm looking to do here. And then I'm cutting apart each of the names because I'm gonna apply them to an individual tag. 
Once you've pushed it down, then you're gonna flip it over, peel off that carrier sheet. It's kind of like if you're working with any type of sticker, you peel off the back and then you stick it down. Here I'm getting it where I want it to be lined up. I'm gonna push it down with my fingers first and then I'm using my little squeegee tool to push down. Then I'm just gonna peel off that transfer tape and as you can see, it needed a little umph as I was pulling everything off, but then it is on there, it's permanent and it is stuck. I continued that same process with the other three names and then I had my four tags. Then to give them a little bit of buffalo check love because you guys know that is totally my vibe, I ended up shortening the jute cord strands so that I could put one unfinished bead, a buffalo check bead, and another unfinished bead. All of these are from Amazon and I'll link them down below. And then I just tied a little loop on the end so I could hang these on stockings or presents. These are really fun gift tags. You could also use them to label bins. It doesn't just have to be a Christmas thing, but that is how to create a really quick and easy decal. So now we're gonna take the same process that we just used on those tags and create this super cute hot cocoa sign. So if you remember, number one is to prep and measure. This time we're actually gonna need to prep it with some paint because it says reception right now. This is an arrow sign from Dollar Tree. You can use whatever sign that you have on hand for this, but I really like these because they're a good size and they've got a little kickstand on it. I had to do three coats of this red chalk paint to cover the entire thing. Then for step two, we're actually gonna import. So this file is available for free over on my blog. And when you go to import it, I like to select complex. That will make sure all of your cuts are nice and crisp. And then you import it as a cut image into Design Space. Insert it onto your canvas and then we are going to size it. So I ended up measuring and deciding I wanted it to be 10 inches in width. So I changed that up at the top and then got ready to cut. I loaded and cut my vinyl just like I did before. This time I'm using a white permanent vinyl and now I'm going to use a transfer tape from Expressions Vinyl. Now I like to use this versus the Cricut transfer tape for signs that have paint on it. If you've seen my Cricut videos before, you've heard me talk about it. I really like Expressions Vinyl transfer tape because it's not as sticky as the Cricut brand. And so when you're putting it on things that you just painted, you don't have to worry about your paint potentially ripping up. Then I'm just gonna get it centered here on my sign, use my fingers first and then my squeegee, and then use some pressure as I carefully peel back my transfer tape. As you can see here, no paint is coming with it. And then my last step was to add some red and white baker's twine just to keep it festive. Now I get a lot of questions on if you do or do not need to seal it. With the permanent vinyl here, this sign's gonna be just fine in a regular home setting. I like to seal my items that are outside or if you're gonna be putting food on them because this isn't a tray or a trivet or anything. You don't have to worry about sealing it and all of the projects that I'm sharing today would be just fine in your home without sealing. The holidays is a great time to take a ton of family pictures and so here is a quick and cheap way that you can display them. I'm starting with a Dollar Tree unfinished wood tray and I'm staining the entire thing with dark walnut by Minwax Stain. I let it dry overnight and then it was time to measure to figure out how big my decal was. The width of the box is five inches, so I'm gonna say that my width needs to be four inches just to allow for the ample amount of space. And then I ended up importing this file that I designed, which you can also get over on my blog. And the final size ended up being four inches across by about two and a half inches high. Then I applied my Cricut transfer tape because I'm not worried about any paint peeling here. I peeled back my backing sheet, just like I would on a sticker or any other kind of decal, and then I applied it to my little sign. I ended up using the bottom of the box to make sure the bottom of my letters were straight, and then to make it into a frame, I just took one of these little Dollar Tree clothespins as well as some Dollar Tree super glue gel. I stuck that to the top center, cut up a photo from years ago because apparently I didn't print any of Finn's first Christmas. I didn't win a mom award there, but you know, it is what it is. And then I finished it off with some more Baker's twine. As you guys will see throughout this video, I love Baker's twine. It helps make everything feel festive to me. This would also be a great gift. You could do a teacher gift with the class photo. You could do a grandparent gift, tons of different options, and it is so cheap. This is definitely under four bucks. 
I like to do a variation of these little rolling pins almost every season and you guys seem to love them too so I wanted to show you a fun holiday take. I get my unfinished rolling pins at Hobby Lobby. It's four bucks or $3.99 for this whole pack and I like to start by staining them all fully in dark walnut just so that dark wood tone comes through the paint. I took two of them and painted the actual center rolling pin part red and then the third one I did just the handles red. I wanted to put letters on two of them and the third one I wanted to make into like a candy cane motif. So I just took some one inch painters tape and wrapped it around the barrel essentially of the rolling pin so that it looked like a candy cane. Then I took some white chalk paint and painted the exposed areas. I let it dry maybe about 10, 15% and while it was still wet, I carefully peeled off the painters tape to reveal this really fun candy cane pattern. Then once they were all dry, it was time to measure so I could add my decals. They are four inches wide, so I decided to go with a three inch wording width. In Design Space, I did the exact same thing I did for the other tags that we started out with. I'm just typing in the font American Typewriter, which is built into Cricut Design Space. Here I'm cutting with some white permanent vinyl again. My favorite is Oracle's matte white vinyl. I like that it's not shiny, it looks more like paint. You could also do a stencil and paint this on if you want to do that as well, but we're doing all decals today. Just like before, we're popping that mat out, flipping it over and getting our cut stuff off. Then it was time to weed and apply the transfer tape. And because white on white is really hard to see, just take my word for it that I weeded it. And then I took some Expressions vinyl transfer tape to transfer it because of the painted surface. I did one that said hot cocoa and the other one said gingerbread. For the curved surface, I like to get it where I want it and then push directly in the center of the letters. Then I push to curve it around the surface. That's been the easiest way I've found to not have it bubble. So go straight down the center as if you were to cut it in half on a plane and then rub it around. I carefully peel off that transfer tape and finish them off with, you guessed it, some more Baker's twine because I love it. And they are all done. These are really cute for tiered trays. You can put them in a kitchen setup. They're also cute in just a little vignette if you've got a cute little gingerbread man mug, gingerbread house all the different things. They are really easy to put together and to customize. You can also add fabric, scrapbook paper, a ton of different options. Now in my earlier Cricut video that I shared some items that you could make and also sell, I love doing these round ornaments, but I wanted to share them here too because these are a really quick and easy way to use decals for Christmas. So I like to use both these wood rounds that I got from Amazon as well as some acrylic rounds that I'll show in a minute. I like to paint these, but you can put some black or white text right on the wood, and after they're painted, I like to measure them. Both these wood rounds and the acrylic circles I'll be using today are three inches wide, and so I'm going for about a two and a half inch width on my designs. I cut out a variety of pictures. Three out of the four are free downloads from me, and then the elf-inspired one you'll see in a second is available on Etsy, which I will also link. Because of the paint, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but as a reminder, I'm using the Expressions Vinyl Transfer Tape, and I'm applying the variety of little sayings that I cut out. Now for this one, I know I'm gonna get questions. Whitney, how do you weed something that little? So I've been trying a hack that I saw on TikTok lately, and it's been working like a charm. I've been cutting these intricate things as iron-on, so instead of saying vinyl when you go to cut, select iron-on. It's not gonna cut as deep, and it's been helping, so give that a try. Then for the acrylic ones, you just have to remove the little protective sheet that's on there. You can do that with your weeding hook, and then you're going to apply it just the same. You can use Cricut, Transfer Tape, or whatever you have here because we're not worried about paint. Now the acrylic ones you can leave as is, or you can add some paint to the back. Either way, you're going to want to make sure that you get the removable film off the front and the back. Once it's off the back, I just took some red paint. This is just chalk paint. You don't need anything too special. And I painted the back so that there was a color for the white to pop off of. Then I took whatever twine that I had that I thought would look cute with each ornament and I strung them up so they could be hung on the tree. These are really quick and easy to customize. You could also make them as gifts or gift tags, baby's first Christmas, all of the above. Christmas vacation reference, as you see here. I really like the shape. They're big on your tree, but they're not gonna be overpowering. And they would also make awesome gift toppers. That's what I'm gonna use the Christmas Graham one for. 
So if you're a Radon fan, you've probably been on the hunt for some seasonal ones and they're hard to find. Well, here's a Target hack for you. I showed this last year in a Hocus Pocus video and I wanted to bring it back. These cups are available at Target. They're from the Hearth and Hand line. They're $3.99 and they look just like Radon, but blank. So I decided to measure them and create my own decals. I'm doing a four inch tall decal and I went ahead and created these for you in my two different favorite Radon dupe fonts. One is the skinny, one is a Matic, and you can just go ahead and put them into design space. You don't even have to worry about moving the text around. It will automatically be the right size if you make them four inches tall. I've got a Christmas Vacation one, an Elf one, Grinch, and if you want to cut them in different colors, just select the ones you want and then go up next to where it says basic cut here on the left hand side and select the color that you want. So these three I want to be red, the Grinch one I want to be green, and this Santa I Know Him one I want to be white. Now this isn't going to do anything right now, but when you click make it, it's going to separate them into different mats. So instead of having them all cut in one vinyl color, you're going to be able to put in your red vinyl for the ones you want to be red and your green vinyl for the ones you want to be green. And it's really nice and easy to do that, but then it's helpful to be able to cut out your red, your green, your white for your different cups. Even though we slightly veered off the normal steps by adding different color vinyl, it's still the same process. Weed it out, add your transfer tape, and then apply it to your item. We're applying it to a variety of black and this like cream color mugs. They've got both colors at Target and they're pretty easy to find in my experience. So I will put that link down below. I usually just get them for pickup and pick them up when I'm getting something else there. I'm applying my Cricut transfer tape here. And then the key for mugs, I like to put something under the handle, like here I'm using my little heart measuring tape to hold up the handle so that I can get it lined up. I like to look over it like I am here versus having the cup sit upright. It's personal preference. We're gonna do the same process we did with the rolling pins and we're gonna start by pushing down in the center and then curl it around each side before we peel up our transfer tape. Now don't go too fast because if something comes up with it, just go ahead and push it back down. It's not a big deal, but if you go ripping it like a Band-Aid, then you're gonna rip your vinyl. So just take an extra second, you will think. Here are the different ones that I made. So I've got Grinch, Christmas Vacation, Elf, a gingerbread, and then a cookie baking club. I'm hoping to do a gingerbread motif in my dining room and you guys already know that I am obsessed with Christmas vacations. So here's where we get into the bigger DIYs and let me tell you these are just like the ones we did. I feel like when we get into bigger things that's when people get into a tizzy and I promise you it's the same. So here we're using a 9x9 nine nine tray and I decided to do an 8 inch width for my decal because it's not going to be a square I'm not super worried about it I'm just going to do 8 inches across. Now this, I resized to the eight and a half inches across, and this is a file that I got from Design Bundles. I'm using some from that bundle for this tray as well as the next sign we're gonna do. Now this was super easy to weed because I cut it out on the Smart Vinyl and I find that it, that is super easy to weed. Now I only am gonna use it for this tray because the Cricut transfer tape can be used on this metal. If I was putting it on to something painted, I would use my Oracle that I like using just because I found with the Smart Material from Cricut, you need the Cricut transfer tape to peel it back. The other ones just aren't sticky enough because it's more substantial because you can cut it without a mat. So here, Using the smart material, Cricut transfer tape, it's good to go. I'm carefully peeling everything back and then I'm getting ready to apply it to my tray. So this is just a big version of the little hot cocoa or whatever that we put on the rolling pins or the tags. I'm gonna get it centered on here and then I'm gonna take my little squeegee, start in the center and then work my way out to get it applied and then I'm gonna pull it back. Now I know usually I seal trays, but for this one, because I'm not gonna actually be serving anything on it, I'm not worried about it and I'm not gonna seal it because it's just for decor, I'm gonna treat this as a sign. But this is gonna look really cute in my little hot cocoa setup and it was so easy to make. This tray was actually headed for Goodwill and I decided to save it from the pile to give it some more Christmas magic in a new life. 
Now this really cute sign is the exact same thought process as that tray. There's just a couple more steps. So this is another item that almost went to Goodwill. I decided to salvage it. This is a sign from Hobby Lobby that we've had for years in our dining room. This summer I made it over and so the sign went into storage. I decided to make it over into a gingerbread sign. To start, I'm taping with some painter's tape around the outside so I can keep that really pretty wood frame intact and not get red paint all over it. Then I'm taking some red chalk paint and doing three coats, letting it dry completely in between so that I've got a red blank canvas to work with. Then this file is another one that I got off of that design bundle grouping. So I cut it to the width of the sign. I measured the width of the sign and then subtracted two inches to give me a one inch strip around the outside, about a inch on either side. And then I added my paper transfer tape and this is because of the paint again. I peeled off the backing and then flipped it over to get it ready to apply. Got it centered and stuck it down the exact same way, squeegee down the center and then squeegee to the outside. I had a little bit of space at the top and I decided to add some baker's twine to balance it all out. And this is something you would easily purchase at the store and nobody will honestly know. This is another one where you could do the stencil route and paint it. You could also use these same files as stencils if you want. I've gotten the question a lot before, so what happens if your design is bigger than the mat and you don't have the new Cricut machine? Well, here is how to do that. I'm gonna make this tall silent night sign. I have this design that's free over on my blog that is already sized to my piece of wood I wanted to cover. So it is 36 inches long and the longest mat that Cricut offers is 24 inches. We're gonna use a cookie cutter method, also known as slice, so that you could cut them both on the same mat so then you could just piece them together when you go to apply them. The first step here is to go to the left and create a shape. I am doing a square, and then we're gonna unlock the left-hand corner so that you can free stretch this box. Now we have to think about how long the mat is, and so the longest you can cut is 23 and a half inches on a 24 inch mat. If you just have a square mat, the longest you can cut is 11 and a half inches. I wanna make my rectangle 23 and a half inches long. So now that I know what will fit on my mat, I'm gonna take my design and I'm gonna put it over my shape, which I'm turning white so I can kind of see what's happening. And if you can't see it, just go to arrange and put it to the front. Now here it actually worked out well where I'm able to have the cut happen in between all is calm, all is bright. So I kind of moved it around to get it so I didn't cut any words. You wanna make sure that line is not gonna cut anything. And then we're selecting both and hitting slice. It's gonna create a stencil, and then it's gonna give you two of the pieces that you want. Here, it's showing white and black, so you can just keep one of them. And so now we've got the two pieces cut, but they're still the right size for your sign. So slice is basically any way that you wanna chop something down while keeping it the aspect that you're looking to do. So then after that point, you're gonna cut it just like you did before. So here I'm breaking out my 12 by 24 mat. This is a green mat, so it's the standard grip as well. I like to have these bigger mats on hand, so when I'm doing larger projects, I have them. It loads into the machine the exact same way, and it's going to stack everything for you, fit it on the mat for you. Once everything's cut out, we're following the exact same process. So flip that mat over, peel it back, and then when you go to weed, here is a tip for something that's larger. I used to try to pull the whole thing off as one big sheet and I would end up having pieces like stick back to itself and it would stress me out. So as I go, I pull till it gets a little hairy where I think it might stick back on itself and I'm taking my scissors and cutting off a piece. As long as you don't cut your decal, so be careful with that as you're pulling it back, make sure you're cutting just scrap extra pieces instead of cutting the actual decal but it's gonna help you work in smaller chunks where you can still do a larger weeding section like this without having to worry about it sticking back to itself. Then I took some transfer tape. It's just gonna be a little bit bigger, but it's the exact same process. Stick it on, make sure it's stuck down with the squeegee. I did that for both pieces. And then I laid out my sign, peeled back the backing, and I started by doing the bottom piece first so I could use the bottom of the manger scene to align with the wood. 
This is just a scrap piece of wood I'd stained probably ages ago and it was in my basement and I was like, I could put a decal on this. So that's another thing you can think about too. If there's stuff around your house that you want to make over, you could definitely do that with just a decal instead of having to go buy something new. Once that was stuck, then I did the same thing with my top piece and I just used the all is calm to kind of line it up. And then here, for some reason, I got it a little off center. So my one star was going to pop off the side. So I just ended up peeling off the transfer tape with that still on the tape. And then I just went up to the top and stuck it back on. It's a really easy way to fix any mistakes that you have. I finished it off by adding just some jute twine and some ribbon on the top and this is going to be a really cute standalone sign. This is another way that you can make porch signs so you would just have to make it a little bit wider but that's how you're able to cut those decals down using slice to get them to fit onto your large signs. And then finally, we're going to do a quick little extra credit project for number 10 with some different color vinyl from one SVG. Now this picture is on sale right now, 50% off at Hobby Lobby in their fall section, and it will probably keep dropping and every store I've been to has had a ton. So hopefully you can find it. I decided to use this. It's the most wonderful time of the year SVG I've had for years. I've done a few different projects with it and I love it. So what I'm going to do is this file came in this black color, but I want to cut it in three different colors. So I'm going to show you how to do that. As you can see on the right here, all of the pieces are its own like layer or its own piece. That is what an SVG will do versus a PNG file. So once you have an SVG, you're going to need that for this. You're going to go through and select what you want to be each color. So I'm going through and holding down shift and just selecting all of the different pieces that will go with the letters. Don't forget the little underlines as well as the dots and apostrophes. Once I have everything selected, I am going to hit weld down at the bottom and that is going to do what it says. It's going to weld those together so it can be one color and they're all going to cut in that aspect ratio. If you don't hit weld, what it's going to do is it's just going to put the words onto a mat sporadically. It's not going to hold the shape that you want. Then I'm going to repeat the same thing with the little red dots and make it red up at the top and then the little leaves and do the green at the top. Once that's all set up, you're going to go through just like we did with the cups and you're going to do your red, your green and your black decal. And I ended up cutting all of these on the iron on setting. It really helped with weeding this intricate cut. So keep that in mind the next time you are cutting, try the iron on setting. You just don't have to mirror it, but just instead of selecting vinyl, select iron on. Then because this is so simple, I'm going to place the little pieces on my own. Some people will use transfer tape to kind of stick on the different layers, but we're keeping it simple today. So I'm just taking the edge of my weeding tool and transferring the three dots. I'm just looking at a picture on my computer of what it's supposed to look like. And then I did the same thing with the green branches to put it where it needed to go. Once those were all stuck down, I took some transfer tape, put it over the top, and then this is exactly the same as if you had a one color decal. Sticking it onto my pitcher, pushing it down the center, then around each side, and then removing my transfer tape. Once you see the process of how to make these little pieces different colors, it really makes it kind of come alive in your mind of how you can do it. And the only way that you're going to be able to do these and get the practice is to just do it. So don't be afraid to screw up, get it out of the box and try. Also leave any comments with your questions. I really enjoy making content that you guys like to watch as well as something that will teach you how to use your machine better. Thank you for watching and a huge thank you to Cricut for sponsoring today's video so I could share all of those tips and tricks and projects with you. Be sure to leave a comment down below and let me know your favorite project and what you plan to create this year with your Cricut for Christmas. Also, be sure to hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any future Whiskey and Wit Christmas content, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!